Yo, what is up, guys? It's Fan here today with the Supergirl episode 5 season 2 review. And all I gotta say, this episode was jam packed with a lot, and I do mean a lot of things to cover in this episode. Because, first off, I'll say the villains weren't really all that cool until we see that they work for the um, Lady Catamus, and she is a fucking savage. That that woman is a savage. She she does not play any games. And that's all I gotta say on that because oh my god. What what she does to those guys when they're about to snitch is pretty fucked up. Like she just flat out murks. Them niggas got bodied and she didn't even have to touch them. That's all I gotta say. But we get into the episode and Carl's trying to show the new alien which I'm just gonna call him Mike cause that's the name she gave him. Mike Trying to show him the way of being human by getting him a job at Kako, just answering telephone. It's a shame when you can't even do that much. I'm sorry, Mike, but you can't even be a customer service guy, and that's like this. I wouldn't say it's the simplest job because you gotta deal with dick of customers sometimes. But come on, man, you you could have learned that. But you know, Carl tried to turn him into a mini version of her. Like even with how they dress, you're like, oh. He's wearing the little sweaters and shit, you know? It's the thing that Carl wears a lot. But throughout the episode, that's one thing. And another thing is that Jimmy Olsen is tired of feeling useless. Now, this actually comes with their first confrontation with the villain, who basically had these really, really cool guns. Like, that's the only memorable thing about them, was that they had really cool laser guns. Like, they weren't memorable. Like, they felt like just common replica, you know, basically CW villains. And CW villains kind of have this formula to where they're like, oh, it depends on which one. Like, if, they're, if it's a villain that we're going to see long term, they're interesting as fuck. Like, when Zoom and all of them, he's interesting as fuck. But when we saw these guys, they were like, oh, they, they just want to rob things and make money. Yeah, that's, that's the typical CW um, formula. And the bad thing is, they could have, they easily... Easily, if Supergirl wanted to, could have been defeated. They could have been defeated, but she didn't really go out them way. Even the first time they fought, I feel like she was holding back. And she was like, you know, the guns don't work on me. He was like, good thing I didn't bring regular guns. And he shot at her, and like I was like, oh, it's not a normal gun. But even then, she was able to hold off against the blast. Like, it wasn't even a powerful enough gun for her like to feel weakened by it. But she was just holding it off, mainly. But... I, I don't know, I just didn't like the villains in this episode, they were just boring as shit, but, you know, as we get more and more into this episode, we see that it focuses on, it focuses on four major plot points, which I do feel like that was kind of cramped in there and they were just trying to, but focuses on Alex and she may or may not be a lesbian, or bi, or whatever, because she basically hanged out with that detective that's always been her friend. I, I forgot the character's name. I don't really care to remember. All I know is that she's a lesbian and all that. She was like, oh, she, they like you hang around her a little too much. You might be into her. And the bad thing is, it, that whole entire episode with Alex, she's just trying to figure out, she's like, am I or am I not? And it's like, it's confusing, yes, but to be honest, you might be. I'm sorry. And it's not because of the way she does it. It's just like how she interacts and how she pretty much is trying to find a way to voice it out for Carl. Because even she tried to tell Carl that she might or might not be because she doesn't know what's going on. Like, she's just confused. And then, let's go to Jimmy Olsen. Now, I gotta give Jimmy Olsen props. He fought those men with no superpowers, no super weapons, just with a baton martial arts skills you gotta give Jimmy Olsen some credit cause he was kicking ass in some of the episodes but then like you know he not doesn't have super strength or anything or doesn't have anything that you know leveled the playing field for him so as soon as they would either A disintegrate his weapon or B get him down on the ground he basically got useless he became a Yamcha like he almost got Yamcha three times and I didn't know like people, for people who don't know Dragon Ball Z has a character named Yamcha he's useless but unlike Y'all, to Jimmy Olsen, pretty useful, and he was, he held up a good fight. You gotta give him that. And basically, I'm gonna kind of skip toward the end of the episode, which was where Lana Lane was having this party, and Lana Lane, she knew about those guys. She wanted to take them out herself. So what she does was she created this like weapon that would blow up all of their weapons. It was basically like. It's a reactor, and the reactor would make the weapons fly up in the air, and they flew up in the air, and it exploded. Now, I gotta admit, Lana Lane, as a character, she's 
she was actually smart for doing that. Like, she's actually really, really smart. Not just that, but this kind of inspires Wen to create weapons for, um, Jimmy and all that. So he can become the superhero. I forgot what his fucking name is. Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. I, I watched this episode. I was very tired. And I was like, no, let me just get this review out. But, anyhow, we find out that Cadmus may or may not be Lana Lane's mom. And a lot of shit is going going to happen. Cadmus ends up killing those villains anyway. He just flat out like because he was about to snitch and tell her everything. He was about to tell the detectives everything. Then she's like, uh, no, you're not. Um, it was good working for you, but if I tell you you got caught, I was killing your ass straight on the spot. And what did she do to them? She killed your ass straight on the spot like this. She's like, here, good job though. You put up a good fight, and she turns on like this little thing, and it just basically. They die. They fucking get murdered. And she just drives by in her car and is like, huh. Well, she just basically laughs at it. And we see that basically toward the end, we see that Cadmus is her whole plan is basically to get rid of Alien. And I was like, yo, when I saw that, I was like, racism runs in the family. Lex Luthor's whole family is fucked up, except for. I don't even know. Lana Lang is kind of, in my opinion, she's suspicious. And I feel like Kara. To really watch her back with her because Lana, yeah, she seems good on the outside, but we've had this classic case of Luther before, and I don't like they need to fucking make us that Superman spinoff or something. Give us like I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but give us like a Superman flashback episode of Supergirl. I'd watch that shit. But anyhow, if you guys like today's review, please hit me with a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm giving this episode an eight out of ten. And I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace out.